All right, everybody. You know what time it is. Wednesday night. And that means... It's a weeknight. And here we are. Weeknights. Hey, hey. I'm Dash. Oh, I didn't even let me alley-oop it to you. I was just about to, you know what I mean? I'm about to serve it up. I figured, you know what? Just jump right in. Double Dutch. He said, hold on, let me jump. Especially because I have a question for you. So oh, man. I want to make sure that, you know. You go with these questions. Right. It's a good All one. Right, and I'm, I am JD, a.k.a. He Who Pots. This is going to seem really random. It's not random to me. But it's going to seem really random to you, probably. I was asked this question today. So, you know, I won't give the whole backstory. It was an icebreaker at work. But I was asked this question today. And I thought to myself, you know what? I'm going to I'm gonna ask my co-host this question because I don't think I know the answer to it. What is your favorite game show? Now, here, here's the thing. Before you answer that question... It does not have to be a traditional game show. It could be any show. What's the matter? I'm just, I'm trying to figure out. Go ahead, go. It could be any show that has some sort of, uh, it could be a reality show that has some sort of competition element to it. It does not have to be a traditional game show. That is not technically a game show. It's a competition show. I was just about to say that's not a game show then. Like... They opened it up, so I'm just going with the way it was presented to me. I'm going to go with Dave Chappelle. I know black people. <laughs> All right. He used to have this segment on the Dave Chappelle show where they did, I did a game show <coughs> called called I Know Black People, and they would ask white people questions about black folks and culture. Okay. <laughs> Did they win anything? Was it a real competition? It was just a comedy sketch, but that was the comedy sketch was an entire game show. Like, I'll send it to you, but yeah. Of course you found a loophole mm-hmm. to answer this question. More, man. <sighs> anyway, mine was Wheel of Fortune. Very basic. Wheel of Fortune is cool. Wheel of Fortune. I used to like. I used to like Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. I loved Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. That was good. But the questions were so hard that I used to be like, man, how the hell did they even know this stuff? Yeah. That's what was so entertaining to me. Yeah. And some people, it was always funny to me. Like, you will have a person that be like, "Here comes Derek. He's an engineer and a physicist, and this, that, and the third. You'd be like, "Ooh." He is smart. He about to win the whole show. He'd lose on like question number three because it'd be some <laughs> random. Those are the people who don't know. Like they'll ask a question like, "What color is the Sesame Street character Elmo?" And they'll say something. They'd be like, "What? <laughs> Can I phone a friend? I don't know this one." You're like, "What? <laughs> Why don't you know what color Elmo is? I, like, what's I'm up pretty- with you?" <laughs> right. It would be like, "I'm pretty sure I know this. My niece watches Sesame Street." And he's I blue. with blue. <laughs> what? What? Phone a friend. I don't care. If you really are not sure, phone a friend. That's what it's there for. Oh, my goodness. Ridiculous. Then talk about, <laughs> yes, I feel good about this one. Final answer. <laughs> feel good about what? The money you just Elmo. lost? Yeah. Uh, right. Either. Right. Anyway, I just figured I'd ask you that because, you know, somebody asked me, so. It's <laughs> random, yeah. Very random. But you know who else they were asking questions to? Oh, oh, oh Oprah. <laughs> so that was actually going to be my question. I was going to ask you, have you ever gotten a car from Oprah? But then I was like, that's stupid. So <laughs> I didn't no. even bother. But I never got anything. She didn't put my kid through college. I didn't get a book. But I also didn't no. go to her show, so, you know. Maybe that's why. I have never been to the Oprah Winfrey show. Um, Me either. I don't think I know anyone who's been. Also, because like... Oh, I think I do. Majority of the people I know are black. Yeah. They were really and then, audience. And then there's that. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. So, Oprah and Taraji P. Henson have been... 
in the news a lot lately regarding the color purple. The color purple did not do the numbers that were expected of the film. Right. Um, that has become clear now. It's been out for over a month now. Um, and it did not do the numbers in the box office that... Right. They say that it's at 60-something million and it took 100 million to make the movie. Right. And so the goal is always to make... You want to double it. In. Right. Exactly. So <sighs> there are questions now floating around about whether this has anything to do with the fact that Taraji P. Henson went up on a bit of a... In the midst of the press tour for the film, Taraji revealed that she feels she's getting paid... She's not getting paid enough on the jobs that she's on. She doesn't only say that, but she also notes that she almost did not do color purple because she felt that she wasn't that their initial offer wasn't enough compensation yep she also cites poor conditions working on the color purple right you know things like safety issues i think there was some sort of robbery that happened and yeah. then and, um, you know, there was a request to have a driver come pick them up or have some sort of security come get them to, to escort them to um, the set. And they, I, from what I understand, she was basically told that if I if we do this for you, we'll have to do this for other for other personalities that are a part of the film as well. So. And a couple of other things that honestly escaped me right now but the so point of, the point of the matter is that it it did not shine a positive light on the entire color purple experience and there is now the question of did taraji cause the multi-million dollar deficit in the box office yep is that your answer to the question or no, I'm, I'm saying yes. That's what that's the question people that, are posing. I'm that's agreeing the question with that people that's... are post posing, and and there's also the rumor is that Oprah is upset about this, and Oprah seems to think that Taraji allegedly thinks that Taraji is responsible for this. I don't know how true that is because Oprah hasn't said it out of her own mouth. So right. But Oprah has said there was there was video of Oprah's that them asking Oprah about Taraji and Oprah responding and saying, I don't even know why I'm in this. She said, I don't even know why my name is being mentioned in these conversations. Yeah. So that's what that's what Oprah said. What do you think about this? I think that first of all, Taraji P voicing pay disparity and issues in Hollywood is her right. I think that when you have a press run for a movie, that's the time to talk about the movie in a good way. Yeah. Um, I think Taraji P has voiced some things that we've heard before. We know Monique has, has kind of had a similar fight. Uh, a couple years with back, Oprah. right, with Oprah, with Oprah, and, and um, Perry. with her and Tyler Perry, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the homies. Um, meaning they are homies, they not, are that, homies. We, yeah, no, I'm not a, that we are homies. No, just to be clear, you know what I mean. But you know, um, listen, if you and Tyler Perry and Oprah kick it sometimes, that's fine too. Listen, let me tell you right now. Number one, I don't think they would like me very much, probably because the shit I'm about to say and shit I've said in the past before. But Ooh. if I did chill with Oprah and Tyler Perry, we'd have been had deals. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I mean, I would. We'd have been on syndicated networks a long time ago. I expect nothing less. I mean, I no. whole podcast network would have been built out already. I just Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Um, anyway, um, yeah, uh, Taraji P voiced these concerns. We've heard similar similar concerns before from Monique. 
Um, I think Taraji chose a bad time to express these things, right? If you're on a press run specifically for a movie, speak highly of the movie, let the movie do box office numbers, break mm. records, whatever. And then you could come back and say, I right, just been six months. The press run is over. The movie is no longer in theaters. Now maybe I want to go on the breakfast club or sit with Gail King or whatever platform you choose. And then you air things out. Yeah. Um, I don't think it was a smart move on her end to speak about the movie disparagingly and her experience on set while on a press run for the film. Um, mm -hmm. Because on the business end, right, on not her side, but the other side, it's like, yo, we paid you the, the amount we agreed upon. We did what we needed to do on our end and met those expectations, dollar amounts, and doing whatever needed to be done post-production, we now are probably paying you another thing, or if not, press run stuff is in your contract, and now you're giving us a verbal bow bow. Um, it doesn't look good on the business end, and my concern anytime somebody does stuff like this is these talented people speaking out, it, they should speak out, but the way in which you do it and when you do it also matters. Now, the next movie that hires Taraji P might say, uh, we wanted to hire you, but we kind of scared you might go on a press run and say bad things instead of good things. Or we just don't want to deal with that headache, right? Um, and that's always my concern. Taraji P is very talented. Um, you know, she's done a lot of things. She's had pivotal roles. And um, I, don't wanna, I, don't wanna, I don't want this to seem like I'm shitting on her or her talent. I just think it wasn't a, a good move strategically. Like, yeah, I don't think that was the time to do that while on a press run, especially when you know, oh, whoa, well, Oprah is involved in this. Oprah is a black billionaire. Oprah is someone who the entertainment industry adores and has adored for eons. And you know, this movie specifically, she has close ties with. Um, so this was really not a good decision when you put all of those things together, um, because you, you're really stacking the deck against yourself. Mm -hmm. And I'm, again, I'm, I'm focusing on the timing yeah. and delivery of what was said. Now, I have no issue with Taraji P voicing her concerns. She should voice her concerns and pay disparity definitely exists. Um, we also know that, you know, business is not necessarily about paying people the most money possible. It's about the opposite normally. It's about paying people a wage that you feel they, uh, you know, you can pay them, but also still make your bottom line. Mm -hmm. The fact that it's brass tax, the movie did not make its money back. Uh, they took a major loss. And on top of that, it doesn't sound good that this was the number. Remember, we said this was, Quoted to be the number one uh, movie in Christmas time last year. Uh, it was the number one Christmas movie. Everyone was supposedly going to see it. It seems like it took a quick decline. Now, do I think that that is because Taraji P? No. I don't think Taraji P is powerful enough and has a big enough fan base for her to be the sole reason that this $100 million film backed by Oprah did not do well. There are probably tons of other reasons why I don't think Taraji P is powerful enough. Did it play a part? Possibly. But is she the sole reason? Should she be the only reason blamed for that? No. My next problem, and then I'll shut up and let you go because I've been talking for a while. Um, my next thing is Oprah. Oprah, stop. <laughs> you know... Come on, fam. You know why you're in, why you're in the conversation because this is your jam. You were involved in this film. Yeah. So of course you're gonna be mentioned. Number one, you're involved in the film. Number two, you're one of the most popular people in Hollywood. Period. Yeah. Of course we gonna mention you if you got ties. That's just how media works. Which leads me to my last point, Oprah. You know the game, baby. You 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 gave cats the blueprint for the game. So of course you know the game. Oprah, stop playing, man. 
Don't act like the Ozempic gave you memory loss or something. You know what I'm saying? Stop it. Okay. So. You you didn't even, you did not need to point out that that woman is on Ozempic. You did not need to do that. Because she lied to the public just like she lying now. How shady are you? (laughs) Reasonably shady. You better stop. Nah, it was a shout out to them. Eminem was no loss. Ah, Eminem is busy with Benzino. <laughs> Don't get me started. I know, but that that was a good that was a good nod to the housewives. I'm sure they would appreciate it. Anyway. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think that Taraji is the sole reason, sole reason that this film was forty million dollars under <laughs> the spend. I don't, I don't believe that. I'm, I just, I'm not buying that. Um, what no. I will say about about the low turnout, because you know, sixty million dollars is nothing to play with, but. You know, in terms of box office numbers, it's low. So, what I will say is that something that I've heard multiple people say, and I don't know how widespread this is, but I just want to throw this out there as maybe a factor. Um, And I've even said it. I know that people are saying that this is reimagining and this is a phenomenal film. Everyone I know who has seen it has said that it's a great film. Um, the original Color Purple was a great film too. The the discouraging part of it is that the original film, while it was a great film, it wasn't a pleasant film to watch. Like, I know people love the Color Purple and, you know, people quote the Color Purple all the time, but it's not, it's a traumatic film to watch. It's dark. And I've heard, yeah, and I've heard multiple people say, yeah, I don't want to go see that. Or I don't want to take my family to see that for Christmas because what it was (laughs) was for Christmas. It's the wild part. I mean, when my family. (laughs) Merry Christmas. Trauma. Right. When my family used to go, honestly, I don't know how many times we really went to the movies on Christmas. The only movie I remember though, and I know I know it was definitely on Christmas Day because it was so crowded and we couldn't even all sit together, was The Prince of Egypt. If I, if I had any singing chops, I'd have bust out singing right now. <laughs> many nights. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but yeah, th- to me, that is more of like a Christmas movie or something that is, that wasn't light, but something that is light and fun and, you know, or action packed or, you know what I mean? I just yeah. feel like there's a chance that one of the reasons why this didn't perform the way they thought it was going to perform is because we know what the original film was like. We have a window into that because we've seen it. And there, again, there have been people who have been like, it was a great film. And, you know, I loved it. Like when you're talking about whether it's a good film or not and and the type of stories that it told um, and how raw it was and, and how um, how much of a window it is into black womanhood and you know just just a, a number of different things at at the i've heard people say in the same breath but whew, isn't it a lot and i just wonder and maybe i'm completely off base here but i just wonder if that was a factor too i don't think again i don't think that that's a sole factor because i think that people again love to quote the color purple know it like the back of their hand And so I'm sure that many of those people who feel that way went to see the film. But I just wonder if that's one of the factors that may have contributed to this. Um, The other thing that I'll say in terms of like the Oprah and Taraji thing and and whether, well, first I'll I'll address what you said about timing. (sighs) It's tricky. I can see it both ways. 
I can understand why the timing was off. And I think in it, it, my instinct is to agree with you and say that, yeah, it was poor timing. It, you know, might have put a cloud over the film um, and put a bad taste in people's mouths um, because there are people who are fans and will work based on their loyalty, not based on, you know, anything else. My issue with with the t- the timing of it is wouldn't couldn't you argue that the timing of it was perfect because she was she was given these platforms that she's maybe not always invited to right because to her point she's not in every single movie right now she had a, she had that run at some point in her career but where she's at right now in her career we haven't seen her nearly as much as we used to see her and that might be because she's turning down jobs or you know the jobs aren't right or maybe she's not getting jobs but i just i can't help but think that it was strategy to do it during this time. Mm-hmm. I don't know what the fallout is between Siraji and Oprah. And I, and, and there has been some speculation that the fallout happened before this. And I just, I also kind of think that comes into play. If they were at odds before the press tour, I could totally see someone saying, well, fuck her. I'm not trying to protect her in this moment because, you know, we have whatever beef. So I'm going to say whatever I want to say anyway. It's just not smart, though. I'm not saying it's smart. I'm just I'm just saying that I can totally see where someone would use this opportunity where they're given a bunch of places to go and speak publicly and they take that opportunity yeah, but then you got to know what's coming on the back end of that. I, I see what you're saying. I don't I don't disagree. I'm saying I was just speaking about the, the timing because, yeah, you could totally say exactly what you're saying. Yo, I've been invited to mad platforms. I never had the reach that these platforms have. This is the time to get my shit off. You can do that. That's your right as an American citizen. But it's going to make it real hard when you're trying to get jobs next month or next year. Probably so. Um, and now look at who you've made angry. I mean, yes, but maybe and maybe she's thinking, well, the people who do come knocking on my door, the people who are who hear me and are willing to pay me accordingly, are the people I want to work with anyway. Maybe the thought process is, I don't. I, I would love for this moment to weed out the people I want to work with versus the people I don't want to work with. But don't I, she do a bunch of Tyler Perry stuff? She does. That's she Oprah's has. homie. Huh? And that's Oprah's homie. That is Oprah's homie. But I don't know that she wants to work with Tyler Perry anymore. Okay. I don't know. I'm just asking questions because I, I, I'm I not sure what the thought process was here. Oh, it seemed it seemed like my, what you said, I don't, and 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 sure. But I, my my thing is not that you're getting your shit off, Taraji. My thing is, yeah, get your shit off. You know, express the things that you need to spread. Express injustice should be called out any time and every time. But it's about what and how. Yeah, and I and that's why why I guess I struggle with it because I feel like sometimes when you feel like your or your back is already against the wall. Or you feel like you've you've tried to climb out of this thing, but you're not getting out of it. It's almost like, well, fuck it. I'm gonna just do do this now, and while while I have the nerve, and let the chips fall where they may. I don't know. I don't. I don't. I haven't spoken to her. I haven't interviewed her myself. I'm just. I'm just trying to 
put myself in her shoes and try to understand where she was coming from when she, you know, brought this to the forefront. Um, and she has gotten support from other black actresses and, um, there have been people in Hollywood who have come, come, come out and said, yeah, I, I get it. You know, I understand. Um, and you know, there is definitely a problem, um, that black women have when it comes to the pay gap. So, you know, um. And then when it comes to Oprah, real quick, um, I agree with you. Like Oprah, how do you, you know why you're in it? <laughs> you know why you're in it. Right. This is not the first time you've encountered something like this. So the confusion no. on your face is like, girl, all right, because <laughs> you don't want to say nothing bad. That's fine. What? Right. Cause what else are we gonna do? Yeah. What else are we gonna do? But I, I don't know. You know, I. We'll see. I guess we'll see what comes of this. We'll see what Taraji's trajectory looks like beyond this. Mm. I don't know. Um, but she's also not the only one feuding with anyone. That's right. Because we got TikTok and Universal. The big wave. Beef. The big boys are battling. They're duking it out right now. Yes, they are. Mm -hmm. So we got uh, Universal mm -hmm. saying that they have uh, their contract ended. Their contract agreement ended with TikTok. And they are not renewing it because TikTok, uh, this is what Universal says, not me. TikTok, TikTok uh, Universal claims. TikTok is not offering a good wage for their music rights and for their payment of artists and that they're basically going to let AI do whatever it wants with the music and the content produced from the music because that was also mentioned in their quote-unquote open letter. TikTok is saying, hey, man, them niggas lying. <laughs> this is Cap. Cappuccino. A lot of cap over there. That's what TikTok is saying. You know Old what I'm saying? People. <laughs> Old people. That's what you said? Yeah. That's what I said. Yeah. TikTok is saying, no, this is not true. TikTok is saying that this is a huge income generator for artists and a great way for many artists to be discovered. They have been discovered on this huge platform with billions of users. Um, to that you say what, co-host? Dash. Oh, you heard it? No. <laughs> a motorcycle passed by just as I said that. I don't know if it came out on the mic. Oh, that's if you didn't hear it, the audience probably won't hear it. But as soon as I went, a motorcycle came into the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. So, <laughs> I'm going to be real honest with you. Be real honest. That's what we want. It's hard. Candor. To... <laughs> oh, no, I'm not pandering to anybody. No, I said candor. Oh, candor. I was like... candor. Oh, got you. Candor. You know, like, like, thank you for your candor. Yes, yes. I don't trust anybody in this situation. I just don't. I think the truth lies somewhere in the middle. And I guess I'll never know that truth. Because I don't trust Universal Music Group is a record label, and they keep saying they write it for their artists and their songwriters. And are they, or is it about them? And then TikTok is the same shit. TikTok, TikTok, you have made so much money off of free pe people using music manipulating music doing all kinds of stuff like yes your platform is very music based i'm on it all the time i know that music is a driving force on tiktok it used TikTok to be is... called musically there you go tiktok benefits from the music on the platform tiktok benefits from creators being able to use the music on the platform so i don't trust either of them. I don't know what the real situation is. Yes, 
Yes. Is it a battle about money? Of course it is. Of course. Come on. That's what it comes down to. And that's the bottom line. I haven't seen the numbers, so I don't know what the numbers are, but I don't trust either one of them. And I hope they figure out whatever they need to figure out. Just just for the actual creators, I care about the creators. And so it would it would suck to go on and not be able to use certain music. It's already hard. Like, you know how many times we've had videos that have gotten flagged because of copyright issues because we used music that was on the platform so i would hate for creators to suffer because of this especially for music that is very common um and that's like top 40 music billboard 100 music you're gonna you're gonna have a hard time finding that music after the deadline tonight but they, let them duke it out. Let the, let them fight amongst themselves. I don't. I have no cape for either one. Sorry. Yeah, I'm with you. I think it's bullshit. I think that both both of them are lying to the public, and and they're doing like the Scarface movie, right? They're they're telling us lies and truths simultaneously. So it becomes easier to digest. So it's more palatable for the public. Is Universal supposed to pay their artists and get the most money for their artists possible and stop AI from altering um, artist creations? Absolutely. Should they protect the copyrights and the trademarks of themselves, their company, and their artists? Absolutely. Is TikTok a huge platform with billions of users? Absolutely. Does TikTok have the capability of helping people discover artists? Absolutely. I think we've all discovered an artist or five just because we like, what the hell is this song? This is so interesting. Let I me go look them up. Sexy, right. I only know who Sexy Red is because of TikTok. Now, obviously, she's a lot more popular now than she was. Right. But that, but when you first heard about her. That's how I hear a lot of music that... Yeah. I Love Water, I heard that on TikTok first. Right. And maybe so maybe I need to expand my horizons, but <laughs> Right. You need to follow like rap caviar on Spotify or something. I don't know. I've been thinking but no, honestly, I've been thinking that, oh, this is just like a sound some random person on the internet created and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is a song. No. Yeah. <laughs> and let's be real. We also have heard artists publicly come forward and say, I have been told I need a TikTok record. I have been told I need yeah. something catchy that the kids will put on the TikToks videos. Uh, we know that. We've heard that from multiple artists. Mm -hmm. Whether they want to do it or not, we've heard Big Sean say it. We heard, uh, I think, Benny the Butcher, but maybe I'm wrong about that one. Um, probably, maybe it wasn't Benny because it's a lot of big labels that are doing it. He's new to Universal. But who was the other person? Oh, uh, uh. Lotto said it. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of artists, especially the up and coming ones. The point is, yeah. we know all of these things to be true, and that's cool. But we also know Universal don't pay their artist shit. Well, that's why when I read the we old also letter, know, it was like, sorry. Right. We also know TikTok is probably paying Universal and not the artists. They mentioned in their public statement that they have artist-specific agreements. Nah, for these big artists. Like, there's a lot of artists that, I mean, yeah, you might have an artist-specific agreement with, like, the top five artists in a genre, right? Like, maybe the people that are being named in the public, like, um, Nikki, Drake, and Kendrick. Maybe you have an artist-specific agreement with those monstrous artists, but not... Not like a big Sean, like not like the artists that fall. A lot of artists fall in that middle, right? It's like the top 10 artists in the genre as far as income that comes in. Then you got this huge chunk in the middle. And then it's like cats that barely do anything. Like they're basically the bottom line, right? And I guess underground artists probably fall somewhere in that bottom thing too. But my point is, the underground artists, the artists who nobody knows, and all those cats in the middle, you ain't got no artist-specific agreement with them. Like, you don't have an artist-specific agreement with Rick Ross. Like, 
No, stop. You don't. Now, you might have one with Jay-Z specifically or Beyonce uh -huh. specifically, but TikTok doesn't have an agreement with the artists themselves. So they're all full of shit. This is about money more than anything else. And that's, mm -hmm. that's pretty clear. Now, what I will say, two things. Universal. Whoever wrote that open letter to the artists and songwriters, give them a raise because it was very eloquently written. Yeah. It, 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 I almost believed their bullshit for a second. It was long, but it was, it was written to understand. Um, I was able to comprehend it very easily. Mm -hmm. So give that person a raise. The second thing I will say is now they keep saying songwriters and um and artists music artists and i would just like to take the same open letter and cross out songwriters and artists and put executives because that is what this is really about yeah it's about executives it's about making sure that the people at the top get paid top dollar it's about making sure that their year over year looks better than it did last year. It's yeah, of course. Bad. So let's stop. Right. Don't don't involve us in, in y'all's nonsense. Is my point. I don't want to be involved in this. Go figure it out. Thank you for letting us know that we're losing music on TikTok tonight. Thank right. You. Really all this, there's really all it was. But outside of that, y'all need to go figure it out. And if y'all can't figure it out, it's fine. The TikTok kids will figure out another way. I... That's true. Yeah, that's it. That's true. That's all it. right. In happier news, I think. We love happier news. Yes, it's, it's good news. No, you don't think so? I, mean, I guess it's perspective based, but uh, we have. I believe confirmations. I believe confirmations on who will be playing Michael Jackson's parents in an upcoming Michael Jackson biopic. Now, I remember them saying his nephew is going to play him for most of the movie. Yes. A while back. Right. And then that was rumored and then that was confirmed. But I didn't know how real this was. Um... Apparently, it's being directed by Antoine Fuqua. Right. Yeah, I saw that, and that's what I was about to say. Apparently, this is real, and it's happening. And uh, tell them tell who we got as the uh, Mike parents. Yeah. So, it seems like it appears that it's in pre-production at this point. Um, Nia Long will be playing... Oh, my gosh. Why did her name just escape me? Michael oh, Jackson's I mom. I don't know why I can't think of her name right now. Um, and Coleman Domingo will be playing Joe Jackson. I got your back. Keep talking. I'm mad that I can't. Like I, her name is at the tip of my tongue, and I cannot. I can't think of it right now. But yes, they will be playing Mike's parents. I mean, two very capable actors. Absolutely. I just saw Coleman Domingo and Rustin. He killed it. I didn't watch that one, but I'm with you. It was great. He killed it. He did. I appreciated the story, too, because I didn't really know much about him. So, Catherine Jackson. Catherine Jackson. Yes, Nia Long will be playing Catherine Jackson. Coleman Domingo will be playing Joe Jackson. And Jafar... Jackson, I believe his last name is Jackson. Jafar Jackson will be playing um, Young Mike. Oh, it's called That's It. Oh, is it? I thought it was That's called it. Michael. All right, let's see. Hold on. Oh, I'm wrong. It's called Michael. Okay. I got your back. Deadline is all right. 
This is interesting. Hold on. What's that? Yeah, Jafar Jackson is the nephew. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, and nine year old actor Giuliano Cru Valdi will portray Michael during his formative years in the Jackson Five. Okay. Okay. So we got a we got a cast going. Oh, okay. Now we're talking. It's gonna be produced by Graham King, who was involved in Bohemian Rhapsody. Nice. And John Branca and John McLean, who are the co-executives of the Michael Jackson estate. Okay. And it's titled Michael. Yes, directed by Antoine Fogel. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think it's exciting. Um, yeah, no, Currently I say we're... slated for release in April 2025. The okay. film is now in production. Okay, gotcha. That is according to Billboard.com. Cool. Thank you, Billboard. Billboard. You're, you're very welcome. I got your back. All right. Well, listen, I think that this should be interesting. I was I was curious who was behind the scenes because we've seen mm-hmm. some biopics that have been interesting. Uh, you know, Bohemian Rhapsody was awesome. The Whitney joint was awesome. Rocket Man was pretty cool, too, even though it was more like a musical. Um, yeah, we know Bob Marley is coming. So we in biopic town. You know what I'm saying? We in biopic town. Yeah. Biopic town. I mean... Can't forget NWA, you know what I'm saying? Well, straight out of Compton, excuse me. Straight out of Compton was good. Straight out of Compton was awesome. Yeah, um, I, I really like that one. Yes, I agree. Um, yeah, so I think this is good. Uh, this is interesting. Um, I wonder how real they're going to keep it. We have seen TV movies and adaptations before about the Michaels. Uh, fan- <laughs> Sorry. Cause it's just, like, cause you, cause you, you raise a good point. I just they be lying to us, and I'm gonna watch it because I love a biopic. I do, but they be lying to us, or not I'm, telling I'm us, the, or not telling us that lying by omission. Like they don't tell us certain things. They act like a whole, fr- a whole portion right. of a person's life didn't happen. Like just cause y'all don't want to tell us the person was doing drugs. Anyway, right. I need to know about the mouse. You know what I'm talking about? Like, you don't know the song Ben? Ben is about a mouse. Oh, uh, 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 you think they're going to talk about that, though? I mean, he made a whole song about it. I would like to know where the guy include Ben. Even if you just show him playing with a mouse like the like the TV movie did. You know what I mean? I need mean, gotta got to address the Ben of it all. Uh, if you're going to address the Ben of it all, you got to address some other things, too. Absolutely. I don't know how you do a Michael movie without addressing allegations and different things. I don't, I don't, I don't know that his family will. I mean, if his estate is a part of it, they're going to keep that stuff away from from the film. I think you could do it in different ways, but there was a there was a trial. I mean, you can't ignore the trial. I mean, you got to be able to at least address some of it. If if it's a biopic, it's gonna go from basically whatever time period they decide to start probably right before he joined the Jackson five until his death. So we or I mean, we got to address, we got to address everything that happened there. Like, the only, in some fashion, I'm not saying got to be a deep dive and we got to see every step of the trials, but that has got to be addressed. The only reason why I'm, I'm even saying, I don't know about that is because I'm just remembering the Janet Jackson doc and she was very adamant about maintaining his innocence. Right. Sure, but that's not that doesn't mean it can't it's not addressed. It was also addressed in the Janet Doc. That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying that they say he's guilty. 
But they show him, you know, sneaking into a dark corner with a little boy. I ain't saying all of that. I'm just saying you got to say something. But I'm just saying it was addressed in a very, like, I don't even want to, like, we're not even going to do this type of way, which is which is why I just wonder if his estate is a part of it. I, I think the honesty, the transparency that maybe we're talking about may not be there. And I don't know, because I don't know. You're right. It should at least be mentioned in some way. Like in, it's, in it's Bohemian a Rhapsody, you know, there's a scene where uh, Freddie Mercury, you know, they show the, 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 the video they did that was very feminine mm-hmm. and them wearing certain clothes. And then later it was addressed like, oh, there's mad gay rumors now because of you and that stupid video. And he was like, that video was y'all idea. I don't, I don't understand how I'm getting blamed. And so that wasn't a deep dive, but it was a, you know, it was a quick addressing. And so there's a lot of ways to do it. I think the question is how much you want to do it. Like in Bohemian Rhapsody, they really dove in. In the Whitney Houston movie, it kind of had ebbs and flows. Certain things they really showed you for real, for real. Other things they kind of just glossed over, you know. They alluded um, to certain things in that. In right, their- and that's all I'm saying. I'm saying it can't, I don't think you could do this movie correctly and just skip that completely. Maybe you gloss over it. Maybe it's just a press conference and or or maybe it's just Michael leaving court and getting in a limo and saying like, man, this shit is so stressful. Y'all don't understand. Something like something. I don't think you could just completely skip it. I guess we'll see. Yes, we will. And on that note, we will see y'all tomorrow. Tomorrow. Bye.